Hey everyone, Chris Brühl here, and in this video I'm gonna show you how to access APIs using Python. But before we jump into the code, it's worth taking a step back and asking what is an API? At a very high level, APIs are the bridges of the digital world. They are a set of rules, instructions, or protocols that allow one piece of software to interact with another piece of software. And so some common examples of APIs might include things like online payments. Anytime you go to a retail page to make a purchase and enter your credit card information or PayPal, that website is going to access the API of the payment service or bank that you're using to make sure that the funds are there, the payment is authorized, and so on. So there's an exchange of information going on behind the scenes between two parties connected by an API. Another common example is when you see Google Maps embedded on a website that doesn't have a Google domain. That website is porting through information from Google service, and oftentimes you'll even see customizations made that Google allows. And so there are a number of common APIs out there that we use on a regular basis, but one very common use case for APIs is sharing data with third parties. And as analysts and data scientists, there's often very useful data that we don't have in our local databases. One example would be something like the weather. It's not uncommon at all, for example, if you're performing an analysis on retail sales, let's say you're selling ice cream, to want to understand how the weather impacts sales. So on a very hot day, we might expect that ice cream sales are very high, while on a cold or rainy day, we might expect that sales are lower. And so being able to access information that isn't in our database or a traditional data set can be very powerful in adding value to our analysis. But when it comes to working with APIs, each API has its own set of rules and terms for interacting with that API. One of the most common rules and regulations is the amount of times you can request data from an API in a given time span. Companies that are offering their APIs for you to access are hosting this data on their servers or in the cloud, and those cost money to run. So it's only natural that there's going to be some rules and limitations on how much we can use our access to these. And so when it comes to APIs, there's a wide variety of how we need to interact with them. Some are almost completely free and require no signup at all. All we need is the URL to access an API. Even some free APIs will still ask you to sign up and get what's called an access token because they wanna be able to track and understand your behavior. And if you do anything malicious with your access, they can revoke that access very quickly. And finally, as I mentioned, some APIs are premium. That means you have to pay each time you use them, while others might give you a little bit of free use before asking you to pay. And so if you work in the field of analytics or data science, being able to interact with APIs is a very useful skill that can help augment your analyses, and it often requires very few lines of code to achieve. So let's go ahead and take a look at working with APIs in Python. I want to point out a very helpful resource that can be useful if you're just getting started and want some generic practice working with any API, or if you're looking for something specific that can help enhance a data project of your own. And that resource is GitHub's public APIs page. So if you Google GitHub public APIs or visit this URL here, github.com slash public APIs, it will bring you to this page. And this page is a very helpful crowdsourced list of APIs that are free to use. And if we take a look at the index, there are numerous categories of APIs available to us, from animals to blockchain to finance, government data. We have science and math, we have business, we have transportation, and what we're going to focus on is weather. So really quickly, you can see this is a massive list of APIs, but let's go ahead and hone in on the weather tab. And so even within weather, there are dozens of APIs that contain different data related to the weather. Some of these are geospecific, so for example, we have the Hong Kong Observatory, we have meteorological data for the Basque Country, we have aviation weather, and so on. The API that I'm going to use for our demo here is going to be US National Weather Service API. One of the very other useful things about this page is it says, do we need an API key? So does, that means do we need a token that is specific to us, or can we access this for free without an API key? And so the very nice thing about US National Weather Service is that we do not need an API key. So this means we don't even need to sign up or do anything else. We can just get started. And so let's go ahead and take a look at how we can access weather data using the US National Weather Service API. So let's go ahead and click in here. 
And in general, most APIs will provide relatively good documentation, although I will say it does take some time to really figure out how to extract exactly the data that you need. But generally speaking, you'll get information about whether or not you need an API key, how to access the data you're looking for, and so on. And so looking at the National Weather Service's API, it says in terms of pricing, this is all intended to be open data, free to use for any purpose. This is a public service and they don't charge fees, although there are reasonable rate limits in place to prevent abuse and ensure that everyone has access. In other words, as long as you're not trying to submit thousands of requests per minute, you're going to be just fine. And if we're thinking about the weather, which is often hourly, we're rarely going to need to submit that many requests. But there are limits in place to prevent you from crowding out other users or basically shutting this service down by submitting so many requests that they can't be processed. But otherwise, it's quite easy to get started. Additionally, many API pages will also have examples of using the API. So for example, it says, how do I get the forecast? How do I get weather alerts? And so on. And so it takes a little bit to reason through this. Behind the scenes, it took me probably 10 to 15 minutes to really get the weather forecast that I wanted. But overall, it's a pretty light lift from the vast majority of APIs. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this in Python. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the documentation, we have some knowledge in terms of working with this. And I wanna emphasize that the point here is really to give you one example. I highly suggest you take this code and play with it and make it your own, as well as try working with other APIs but I do want to point out that it can be a bit of a trial and error process as you learn how to interact with these APIs. But in terms of this API, we only need two libraries and we really only need one, but I want to use pandas to store the data that I'm retrieving from this API. The important library here is requests and requests is commonly used in web scraping as well as for accessing APIs. Requests essentially allows us to perform the same activities that our browser does using solely Python. And so the first thing that we're going to do is access the weather.gov API. So api.weather.gov. And one way to access weather for my location is to pass in geographic coordinates. And so here I'm passing in 34 degrees north latitude and 118 degrees west in terms of longitude, which roughly correlates to the Los Angeles area, which is where I live. And so what we're going to do with requests is say request.get the information from this URL. And then we're going to ask for the JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. It's essentially a dictionary format for storing data. And what this first request is going to tell me is how exactly to access the hourly weather forecast for my location of interest. And so let's go ahead and import our libraries, requests and pandas. And then let's go ahead and access this URL using requests. And if we take a look at the JSON returned, what we can see is a number of metadata but this also tells us the properties of the points. So it tells us our time zone is America, Los Angeles. It also tells us what our forecast zone is, but what we want is the forecast hourly information, which is the URL that's going to help us retrieve an hourly weather forecast. So here we're going to use the URL api.weather.gov.gridpoints, LOX, which corresponds to the local weather office in Oxnard, California. We're going to use this grid format to get the square representing the area of Los Angeles that I'm in. And we're going to get the hourly forecast here. And so once again, we're going to use the same exact method we did to get our metadata for my location to get our hourly forecast. So I just copy this hourly forecast URL. We're storing this in the variable URL here. And then we're going to use request.get. And let's take a look at the JSON returned here. And so what gets returned is a JSON object stored in dictionary format that contains, again, some metadata here. It also indicates the coordinates that bound the region that I am in. So you'll see that there's a polygon that contains a geographic area associated with the initial coordinates that I plugged in. What we're interested in is the hourly forecast. And so what is stored in this JSON object or dictionary is a number of different periods. So period one here is going to be at the time I'm running this data, which is 4 p.m. on January 18th, 2024. And the temperature forecast for this hour is 58 degrees in terms of Fahrenheit. So if you're from overseas, I swear that isn't super hot. That's probably about 13 degrees Celsius. So <laughs> I'm not sweating, but regardless, it also gives us information like wind speed, wind direction, a short detail of this forecast, so partly sunny and so on. And then if we take a look, there's another dictionary that contains period two. And so this one starts at 5 p.m., ends at 6 p.m., 
And we can see that weather has gone from 58 from our 4 p.m. forecast down to 56 at our 5 p.m. forecast. And if we were to keep scrolling, we have 6 p.m. here, we have 7 p.m., we have 8 p.m. where the temperature drops down to 54, and so on. And so this is going to contain hourly weather forecast information for the next week. And so what we need to do is access the specific portions of this dictionary that contain the forecast data of interest. And so what we need to do is first access this properties piece here, which contains our hourly forecast information. And then we need to access the periods. So let's go ahead and break this down really quickly. If I just go ahead and look up the key properties in our JSON object, what we're going to do is get into the second level of this JSON object. Let's take a look. And so, We've gone one layer in our nested dictionary, but what we want to access is this periods, which is the list of all the periods here. So if we go ahead and specify periods, what we're going to end up with is a list of all of the hours in our hourly forecast, which goes all the way down to 156. So we'll have 156 hours of forecast beyond the current hour. And so what we want to do to collect all the data of interest, what I'm really interested in is just the time of day as well as the temperature at that time of day. So it'll be a very simple data set. And so to do that, we're going to loop through each element in this list here. So we see our list brackets, and we're going to loop through each of these dictionaries and extract the start time as well as the temperature. And so I've gone ahead and done this down below. And so for our periods, we're storing the list of all the periods that we just saw. And what we're going to do is create a dictionary. And for every period in this list of periods, we're going to create dictionary entries where the key is the start time and the value is the temperature at that time. And so for period and periods, we create an entry. Let's take a look at our dictionary. And so here we can see that for this first hour, which is January 18th at 4 p.m., the forecasted temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is 58. Then at 5 p.m. it's 56. We see it drop at 8 p.m. down to 54. And then it drops once again at 10 p.m. down to 52. It hovers there for a while, the sun rises, and then at 10 a.m. our temperature rises up to 57 before topping out at 60 degrees at 4 p.m. once again. And so not a lot of variability in temperature, we're close to the coast. And if we want to store this data in a data frame, all we need to do is take this dictionary returns, create a data frame out of it using pandas, where our date time column is the keys of our temperature dictionary, and the temperature column is the values of our dictionary here. I'm then casting our date time column to a date time format. And if we take a look at our data frame now, we have the time of day as well as the associated temperature for that forecast. And from here, we could go ahead and build a simple plot. And so this is the seven day forecast for hourly temperature in Los Angeles where I live. And we can see a pretty predictable pattern here. Temperature rises around 4 p.m. every day before declining at night, and it rises once again. And it looks like on the 23rd and 24th, we're going to have wider swings in temperature. This likely means less cloud cover and hopefully a little bit more sunshine. And so that is the very basics of accessing an API. Honestly, the hardest part is figuring out how to work with the specific API. But in terms of Python code, once you've learned the ins and outs of the API you're working with, it's often quite simple to get this data into a usable format quickly.